praise be to Almighty God and uh, peace and blessings be upon His Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we got um, Brother Eric, I believe, yep. yes, who is a Christian. And today we are going to have a conversation about Christianity. Um, is there any particular topic that you would like to touch upon? Well, anything if you'd like to actually yeah. task me with, then I'll be willing to answer. Okay, let's talk, let's talk about the love that the Christians preach. Yes, when they say that Jesus is all about love and God wants to love everyone. That's the reason he gave his only begotten son and sacrificed himself. So love and um, crucifixion, incarnation, sort of uh, atonement of sin, that sort of thing, you know? Because ultimately we all seek salvation, isn't it? That's very, very true. Yeah. And granted, being, a, being of Christian nature, Yeah. Since actually reading the gospel within the Bible, a lot of things that have actually come out um, because I was a lost lamb for 26 years. Right. And actually learning about the Lord Jesus and what he did for us, because he died for our sins. Right. He died for our sins. He sacrificed himself as testament to who mankind is. And as a person who is a reasonably new Christian, I mean, I was only baptized four days ago. Seriously? Wow. Yes, only four days ago. Okay. So 28 years later. Right. You, what does that mean, just for our viewers, because many people don't understand what baptism involves or what is the meaning of it. If you could perhaps just give us a summary as to what it means to you. Well, baptism to me is the devotion to God, as right. it were, as a devotion to the Lord Jesus, because... So you, feel, you, you are like committed now? I, I am, yes. Okay. I surrendered my life to Him. Right. And this is why a lot of, in fact, all of my life has changed since that period. Right. After witnessing deaths of my family in person, it kind of made me appreciate life a lot more. And that kind of actually opened my heart to the fact of, oh, where have they gone? Where have they gone? Are they, are they departed forever? Or have they gone somewhere else? Right. And it was only after reading the scripture of learning of actually how they all ascended to heaven. Sorry, they... They all ascended to heaven. How do you know that? It's intriguing, it really is. <laughs> it is, really is intriguing. Because the whole, the whole meaning of the day of judgment is that God judgment. is going to judge yes. everyone. Yes, because Isn't it? you stand before him. But when you say they have gone to heaven, it seems to me at least, or, and maybe to many viewers, that you have already made the judgment on, on behalf of God. So shall we leave the judgment to the Almighty? Yes, you do. The yeah. one who judges everyone? Yes, you let him do all the judging. Because yeah, absolutely, remember, yeah. Because we're here, we are here to, it's a big learning curve really. Being, yeah. on, being in this existence, I mean, yes, I do believe as well that we come back if we haven't learned the truth. Absolutely. Or if we haven't opened ourselves absolutely. up. And granted, yes, there are many people who succumb to the ignorance and they don't realize that the Lord is their salvation right. within their lives. Okay. And it's because after you surrender yourself to the Lord Jesus, He takes control of your life. He takes your hand and He walks with you and He shows you what the ins and outs of life can be. Hence why I'm here. So He guides you? He does. He guides me. So when you say He guides you, who is this He? Who is this pronoun you're referring to? The Lord Jesus. The Lord Only Jesus? Jesus? Christ, yes. Only Jesus? What about the God of Jesus? The God of Jesus, the Father of Jesus, the oh. Almighty God. Well, He's the God of Jesus as yes, well, right? Yes, yes. He's the Father. He also, he also does... Does he not guide you? What? Does, does the Father not guide you? I guess he does and he doesn't. Mm, what does that mean? If he does, then I can understand. If he doesn't, I can understand. But when you're going to say both, then you're just negating one from the other. Well, from what it's, I... It's a contradiction in terms. Well, only from what I've learned. Yeah. Is that the Lord guides me. That's all. Let me ask you this question. When Jesus Christ was on earth during his ministry, whom did he seek guidance from? Whom did he pray to? And whom did he worship? He prays to God. When you say God, you mean the Father? Yes. Okay. Should you not be following in the footsteps of Jesus? What? Should you not be following the example that Jesus yes. set when he was on earth? Yes. You do believe Jesus is your role model? Yes. He's your teacher. He's the one who guides you. Yes? yes. If the teacher himself is showing you by example, that you should worship the only true God, the Father. Yes, and you should pray to Him, and you should seek His help. 
in any situation? Why then do the Christians today seek the help of Jesus when Jesus himself sought the help of God Almighty, the Father? Well, again, personally, I can't answer that. Right. But I can only. But, but can I you? Can, I mean, I don't know. Have I you can, have you given a thought to it? I, I can. In fact, it has come up as a question mark in my mind right. and in my heart as well. But what does your heart say? That's the important thing I want to know. Well, because you know, we, go, we as Muslims, we believe Allah has created us with something called the natural disposition, which is called the fitra in Arabic. Yes. So when you do something wrong, or when you seek a god other than the Almighty God. Yes? So yes. anything that is not what God expects you, your heart will tell you that something is wrong here. Like the way you said, there's a question mark here. So for someone who is a rational mind, for someone who is a, a person who is looking for truth, like you said at the very start, I would expect anyone in that position to ask themselves a question that why would Jesus pray to the Father when I I'm not doing the same thing, yet I claim to love and be guided by Jesus. How can you be guided when you're going against what Jesus himself set forth as an example to worship and to pray to only the Father as God Almighty? Okay, time to take you, you, you understand my question, yeah, yeah? Yeah, but it's time to take you on a little journey. Sure, go on. Right. When I was born, I was born into a very atheist family. My okay. mother was demonized. Demonized? Yeah, she was demonized. How, she, what she, do you believed, mean? she believed in Satan and his angels. Wow. And she was a I, Satanist. Yes, I was effectively she was. I mean, instead of growing up with things like Postman Pat, I was growing up with films like The Omen, The Exorcist, things like that. And it actually fueled hatred within me. Wow. It fueled hatred to the extent that I was against friendship. I was against being open to people. I was also against being open to everybody who actually came and approached me. I was very self-centered and I was very aggressive. I hated everybody. Mm. And that continued for 15 years. But there was one big incident which changed my life forever. My mother, she tried to cut my throat. Oh dear. She tried to kill me because the reason was, was because I wasn't, I wasn't following her ideals. Sorry, which channel are you from? Oh yeah, now I know you. <laughs> Didn't recognize you with your mask. Sorry, go on. Sorry, yeah. because I wasn't following her ideals, so therefore she thought I was worthless. Okay. Then something, but on that day, something told me to run. Something told me to run. How old were you, if you don't mind me asking? When you? I was fourteen. Expect... I was fourteen. Okay. And it can be quite traumatizing that kind of experience. It is, especially if your mom is involved in that. What about your dad? Did he practice my, the same? My father. Well, my mother kicked him out when I was only two months old. Oh dear. So really, um, because you didn't was, have much relation. With no, with I didn't dad. see the man for 25 years until 2018. Okay. But and this is where it's all starting to clue together because I ran to her parents, her, right. which were my grandparents, and they brought me up for 11 years. But it was only until that stage. I didn't even realize what was going on. Mm. I didn't realize what was going on within myself. I didn't know who to believe or who to trust because my world was going up and down, up and down on a constant basis. And it was only until the advent of that time when I started witnessing my relatives pass away and die in front of me. I mean, my grandmother, she died right next to me right. and I felt her depart. I actually felt the energy go. Then, about a year or so, about, sorry, three years later, my grandfather had a heart attack and mm. I found him dead on the toilet oh. whilst, whilst I slept. And sad, yeah. then eventually, my, I lost my uncle Eric. And of course, then we revert back to my mother because I didn't see her for about 12, 12 years. Oh. Was she still in the same, was she still practicing the same things? Well, really, well, really, she was always. She was always causing anger. She wasn't, you know, she was always blaming everybody else for herself for her own actions. Okay. And this was something that I'd escaped from, and this was another part of the awakening for me. Okay. And why would you want to live with a Satanist or somebody who believes that, oh, that I call him the Dark Lord, because that's what he is? How could, why would you follow something like that? I mean, oh, it's, it's infinitesimal. I can understand. 
and where you're coming from. I mean, yeah. To be honest, I have never met anyone who had had close encounter with the Satanist since it's your own mom. So just like in a, in a, in a very short summary, tell me what do these Satanists believe in? Like what is, what is their daily practice like? Do they, in, like the way we pray to God Almighty, do they pray to Satan or something? I don't know how it works. Well, my, well how my mother went about it was right. she'd always get drunk or she'd get high on illegal substances okay. and then she'd absolutely fly off the handle. She would then, I don't know if it was the influences by the drugs and the alcohol, but she always used to do like demonish things. Like She used to take my soft toys and turn their heads around in front of me. She also used to pin them against the wall and like, I don't know, like put pins in them, things like that, as if it was voodooism as it were. Um, she would also try and preach uh, to me a kind of devilish ritual, saying, oh, he's coming back, Satan will rule your life, you are going to hell. And she, you know, she made me feel this big. I can understand you. And so it was was she like in some for, sort of a group or all this was just by herself? It was purely by her own volition. Oh, okay. Purely by her so own So maybe volition. there is obviously some disturbance. I don't know whether it's mentally or whatever it is. There seems to be something not right. Did you not like contact the social services or something? Because in this country, you know, you have that safety net. Yes, but unfortunately that worked against me. Oh, did it? Because my mother, my mother actually isolated me similar to what people had to endure with COVID last year. Mm. I was always on my own, never allowed to go out and speak with friends or relatives, and I couldn't even put two words together, let alone an entire sentence. And with my mother's wrath and power over me, she was the one that did the talking to social services right. instead of me. She lied to such an extent mm. that they were actually blaming me for the cause of all of her problems. Okay. That's what she was caught. That's what yeah. she was doing, and eventually, I, I just went on a downhill death spiral. Okay. From there. I understand. I mean, look, there are two things that you mentioned, which kind of wants me to question. So one was the death of your family members. Yes. So that really shook you in a way, and obviously your background with your mom—that's a different thing. Mm -hmm. So this afterlife, you know, which you. You, you're worried about the afterlife, like where would they go after time? So this is something that you want to question. Did you question about this and did you find an answer? At the time, at the time I must admit that I didn't. Right. Because, again, it was only recent times that my mind, is, my mind and heart have actually been opened to, to such a subject, hence why I'm here, because I'm here to learn. Right. I'm here to learn. Absolutely. Again, yeah. From all sides, whether you can be Islamic, you can be a Buddhist, you can be Hindu, you can be a Christian. I like to learn from all aspects. No, it's good. You you have an open mind. You're an open-minded person, so it's something that's quite important when it comes to learning new things. Learning, keeping your mind open is quite important because if you're just going to shut yourself and not listen to anyone, then you can easily be indoctrinated by that one single what do you consider to be the truth you know you can do and then you can class yeah. other religions as being well Absolutely. Evil. Yeah. i mean i mean take islam for example what's happened over the last 20 years it's been black holes mm. with what's been going on everything every terror terrorist thing, terrorist attack everything like that has all been reverted back to islam hasn't it that's what the media portrayed yeah, that's what the media portrays because it gives your However, religion a bad name absolutely yeah then you've got, but don't forget, you have got Christian attacks as well. You've got Christian rape pillages, you've got yeah. murders, you've got things like that. But people take it as, it as like, oh, fair enough, he did wrong. But they absolutely condemn anyone who is Islamic. Yeah. I mean, obviously, look, if the, this is how, unfortunately, the media works. Hey? Yeah, yes, of course. No, 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 it doesn't have to be if you want to. Yeah, we're in the middle of a conversation, if you don't mind. Yeah. That's why I asked Yeah, sure. So what I'm saying is that uh, the media can obviously twist the reality, yes, and we know that. Obviously, there are 1.9 billion Muslims in the world today. Yes, so you're talking about like every, um, like in, in every four people, one person is a Muslim in a way, effectively. I mean, 
If anyone thinks that all Muslims are somehow related to terrorism, yes, then they are obviously deluded. And I think the media has a big role to play because whenever there is some terrorist attack out there, they always highlight the religion of the person if they are Muslim. They However, do. when it's a right-wing Christian who does it, then they, they, they say... They just dismiss it. Exactly. No, they say something like a lone wolf or something like that. But anyway, the people who are woke, they know the reality, they know what's happening. And I think from experience, people know who are the good guys, who are the bad guys. You know, obviously there are, we don't, as a Muslim, I would never say that there are no bad Muslims in, in, in our community. Obviously every religion or every, even non-religion, even amongst the atheists, amongst the agnostics, amongst the communists, among, amongst all the other ideologies out there, is always bound to be good and bad people. Yes? And this is true for every faith, every religion. But a terrorist doesn't have a faith. They have an ideology that they want to somehow think or make other people think as well that that is the truth. Yes. So coming back to the discussion we were having, you know, that's uh, the reason I asked you about the afterlife, because like I said, that is something which had a profound effect on you. What do you understand about the afterlife as a Christian? Well, again... Or what have you been told? I don't know, because you said you're fairly new well, well, again, to this I'm faith. Fairly, I'm fairly new and I'm still mm. learning. Okay. All I know is, once we have departed, once this body has finished its use, yeah. we ascend and we go before God and we get judged. And we get shown a complete relapse of our lives to right. see what we have done wrong, what sins we committed, and also if we've done right or what was have we done right. Yeah. And if we have fulfilled his criteria, his Ten Commandments, then we shall ascend into heaven. Right. Okay, that's all I know so far. Okay, so when you say the Ten Commandments, you know that is the Mosaic Law. That is the Old Old Testament. It is the Old Testament. Yeah, and Jesus, by the way, said he's come here to fulfill the law. So he himself maintained the law. He himself practiced the law. And he told others to do so. However, you know, that is the reason. What, do you know what is the first commandment from those Ten Commandments? Well, again, I just need to read it. I just know the yes. Ten Commandments. Yes, so the first, the first commandment is to love your Lord with all your heart and your mind. And this is very important. So when he says, love your Lord, yes, we have to ask the question, which Lord is, or which God is this first commandment talking about? And Jesus was asked the same question by a Jewish rabbi who comes to him and asks him what is the most important commandment. And he points to the Shema. You know what is the Shema? The Shema is something that the Jewish people, they testify to and they pronounce during the prayers. Yes, which is basically Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Elahu Elahi Ahad. Okay, now I might not have pronounced it correctly, but what it basically means is that the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Yes, yes. and they are referring to this one unique God Almighty, yes, which Moses believed in. So if you look at Deuteronomy 6 4, this is exactly what Moses says. And then Jesus repeats this Shema in Mark 12 29 in the New Testament when he was asked this question about the most important commandment. So that's the reason, you know, earlier I asked you, why do you pay so much emphasis on following Jesus rather than following the God of Jesus? Because if I was in your place, I would look at the ultimate authority. And who is the ultimate authority according to Jesus Christ? Lord God himself. God the Father, yes? So would it not be more sensible you know, you're, you're worried about your afterlife. Would it not be more sensible to actually believe and to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ when in John 17, 3, in the New Testament again, he says, the, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the Father, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So Jesus is saying to believe in the only true God, and he identifies that, to be only the Father, the only true God. He didn't say um, the uh, one of the true God, yes? Like he didn't mention anything about the Trinity. So he, he never said that to believe only in me, Jesus Christ, or to believe in the Holy Spirit. But he says, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the Father, the only true God, and Jesus Christ himself. So obviously, you have to believe in Jesus, but he identifies himself as a Christ, and you have to believe and worship and pray to only the Father because he identifies against Jesus Christ whom you hold to be quite high. Because the Lord Jesus was the Son of God. Yeah, but we'll come to the Son of God in a minute. 
let's identify who, according to Jesus Christ, is the only true God. Yes? So this is from the scripture. It's not the church telling, because the church can preach something against. You know, there are many churches out there. Many churches preach many different things. Even though they all claim to have the same Holy Spirit, they claim, they, they kind of preach different things. And, and, and again... Sorry, I need to go now, but we don't have the time to talk. But yeah. It's Oriental Orthodoxy. Oriental Orthodoxy. That's the straight path of Christianity. That's what you, can, you can join us if you want, sister. Just look, just look for Oriental Orthodoxy. Yeah. We can Oriental Orthodox. Yeah. Okay. She means Eastern Eastern Orthodox, so you know. Same things, semantics. And of course, but, but I have to. Uh, yeah. But I have to actually thank you, yeah. as being Muslim, to actually teach me as yeah. well. That's something I thought would never happen. But you know. Every day is a school day. <laughs> every day you yeah. learn something new every day. Yeah. The thing is, you know. I have been coming to Speaker's Corner for a very long time. I've had many discussions, I, I can understand. I've had many discussions with Christians, with non-Christians. And the main objective of um, our channel, which is Dawa Wise, yes? So please like and subscribe if you guys are getting value from this, inshallah. Uh, God willing, that means. So our objective is to basically to learn and to propagate the truth. Yes. So what, when we look for evidence in different scriptures, like in the Bible, in the Quran, yes, we look for what the, the scripture says. You know, because there can be many kinds of people. Like, like we talked about different kinds of people in different faiths earlier. They can be good and evil. You know, people can always say many things. Yeah. But ultimately, what we, in order to judge a religion, in order to judge anybody's ideology, you, you always look at the scriptures, see what they say, see what they teach. Yeah. So, for example, I gave you the example of John 7 and 3, where Jesus himself is telling you very explicitly who the only true God is. Yes? So, regardless of what the church teaches about the Trinity, which, to be honest, is not in the Bible. Yes? You'll never find an explicit statement in the Bible of anyone saying God is a triune being or God himself is saying that I manifest as three persons. Okay? Because the church took 400 years. Yes? To even begin talking about this, um, 350 years to be specific, yeah, in the in the Council of Nicaea, Council of uh, Constantinople in the year 381. So this is like 300 years or more after Jesus Christ has left. They're still arguing about whether Jesus, whether God is um, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, or is just the Father and the Son, or even the Holy Spirit is in there. You know, so many different ecumenical churches. 